Welcome back to part seven of Circle Jump. We're still working on our Godot engine mobile game. And this time we're gonna make the circles move, which is gonna add some difficulty to the progression of the game. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to fix a bug. And when we run the game and we're at the title screen, if we spam this button, you see it triggers more than once and we wind up crashing. We're sending out the signal, the press the signal on the button, multiple times, but our code isn't accounting for that. And so there's a couple things we can do about that, but I think the easiest is going to be if we go to our base screen script here. And after we have clicked the button and we call the disappear method, we're going to disable all the buttons because we don't want to capture any more button presses. And since we have them all in a group, that should be pretty easy. We can just say call group to call the same function on every group. And the function we're going to call on the buttons group is set disabled. And we're going to set it to true. And then we want them to come back and be enabled again uh, when they appear. So we'll set this to false on appear. And that should prevent us from being able to, yeah, so I'm clicking a bunch of times. I can't multi, I can't multiple click on these buttons. Yeah, that fixes the problem. Okay, on to new features. So over here in the main, we are you know, getting points whenever we get captured, but we are going to use that score to handle the progression, the difficulty progression, and we want to spawn different types of circles and that kind of thing. But we might have other things that give us points besides just being captured. And we're going to want to check that score. And when we cross certain thresholds, change the, the spawn rate of circles and things like that. So to make this easier, I'm going to take score here and I'm going to make it a set get. So that we have a function that we can call when we change the score. And that means here we can do set score zero. You, know, you can do it this way. You can say set score zero. Or if you want to call the set get locally, you can say self dot score equals zero. Now the drawback of that is there is a small performance hit in calling self because you're generating a reference to the to this node. Uh, in the case of this game, performance is far from an issue, and I like the clarity of the code looking like this. So in this case, I'm not going to call the set get directly. And then here we'll say self.score plus equals one. And then what we want to do in the set score function is update the score. So func set score, we pass it, it's going to be passed a value. We're going to set the score, we're going to set the score equal to that value, and we're going to update the HUD. So that should be fine, that shouldn't change anything at all. You can see the score is just going up the same as before. But what we also want to do is keep track of what level we're on. And that's going to go up every certain number of rings, which we put here on settings. Circles per level, five. So every five circles that we hit, or every five points we get uh, currently, that's going to move us up a level. We'll check that in the set score as well. So if we are, if score is greater than zero, and score will divide by circles per level. And if the remainder is zero, we're at a multiple of five. So we will increase the level by one. And we should show a message to that effect. We moved up to level whatever. 
Okay, we make sure to initialize level when we're uh, starting a new game. And that should do it. Let's give it a shot here. Yeah, went to level two. Okay, over to the circle where we want to add movement. I want the circles to move back and forth so that as the game gets harder, we have moving targets that we have to jump to. So we're going to do that by using a tween. And I'm going to call this move tween. And then in the script, we're going to get a reference to it. And then moving is going to be separate from the modes, right? We might have a static circle that's moving. We might have a limited circle that's moving or other modes that we add. So what we are going to do is have a move range. This is how many, how much the distance of the move is, how far back and forth. If we set this to zero, we'll have a non-moving circle. And then we're also going to have the move speed, which is going to be how fast it moves back and forth. And then so now we need to set up that movement. And we're going to do that with a function down here at the bottom. I'm going to call this the set tween. And we're going to call this to start the movement. But when the tween completes, we want it to repeat again. So we're going to call this again every time the tween finishes its cycle. And that means that when we call it with the tween's completed signal, it's going to pass in two values, which we don't actually need, but we have to account for them. And if move range is zero, we're going to return. We're not going to move. So the first time we call this, we won't start the tween. And now move range. We're going to want to reverse every time we call this so that it moves back and forth. And then the move tween, we're going to set up its movement. We're going to inter interpolate the property on self of position.x, colon x when you write it in this reference. And then we're going to go from whatever our current position.x is to position.x plus move range. The duration is move speed and we're going to use tween.trans quad and tween uh, in out for the easing. And then we're just going to say move tween.start. Now we want to connect the tween's tween completed signal and we want to connect it to that same function so that every time it finishes it's going to come back and call this again. And then in our init we can set that uh, for the first time. Okay, let's give that a shot and see what happens. There we go. The circles are moving back and forth. All right, you see them. That's exactly what we want. All right, that'll do it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.